Okay, uh, another breakdown. This one's going to be uh, one of me rolling with um, one of uh, our blue belts. Uh, his name's Renee, and uh, so it should be interesting. Uh, I do remember this role, so let's uh, let's just get into it here. All right, so slap bump, standard. <laughs> All right, so I'm trying to reach uh, to engage and get some sort of attachment here. Sometimes it can be hard. Partners, uh, people you train it with don't want to quite just obviously step inside your guard. So sometimes you got to reach for things and um, look for some sort of connection. So we did a good job getting my feet up, putting me on the ground here. So I immediately start, uh, start playing like kind of a, um, um, a bit of a diamond concept game here where my elbows and knees start retract my knees start retracting I start connecting my elbows to my knees I could go into a reverse sailor heave here I like the way uh you know Renee's starting to enter here he's starting to go into a knee slice position he's controlling the bottom leg here uh hand on this knee here so so far so good okay so he turns the corner here and I went to reverse sailor heave this is uh technically not the, the best thing to do when you're actually passing someone's guard that is playing reverse sailor heave um, reverse sailor heave is actually designed for this type of thing to happen for a person to get overcommitted, meaning overcommitted over my head here. So if I can get, uh, 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 Renee even further over my head, then that means I can start spinning between his legs. Um, this is the whole point of reverse sailor heave. So when somebody drops down like that, they're kind of, it's almost their, it's, it's usually in their best interest to, to stay a little further back. Um, and, and get rid of the uh, connection I have with my with my right hand here to his leg because he can't free his leg yet. So there are certainly some methods uh, you can use to actually overcommitting. Like say he took his hip and he he dropped it over here. That that, that could work um, to kind of free that leg a little bit. But I'm just gonna pop up and, and start to wrestle up. So let's see what happens here. So yeah, see how I spin through because <clears throat> it was too far over my head. So I just ball up, spin through. I use my I use this hand to kind of post on his armpit to kind of push myself through. Okay, so now both my hands are behind, and I have one knee in, one leg sticking all the way through. So this is classic. They call this uh, the kiss of the dragon. I, I don't know who came up with that. Um, it was the Mendez brothers. I remember reading about it a long, long, long time ago. So um, I don't know who named it, but uh, yeah, there it is. Kiss of the dragon. So now I can start going into leg entanglements. I can start uh, taking the back. Um, potentially. So I'm keeping the connection, which my connection to both legs. He's doing good here. He's just trying to stay kind of based, not uh, not freaking out too much. Because if he were to actually, you know, start running from me here, I would certainly pop up and start to get his back. So he's he's kind of staying in this in between position, trying to stay uh, based out. So I'm staying calm here. So he starts to look for a, a toe hold, which is not a bad idea. Um, but if you notice my hand here is on the hip, so this is going to stop that toe hold because, uh, once I have this connection with his hip, he can't go, he can't extend away from me and, um, in any kind of rolling or, or motion he's going to do, I can actually follow. And, um, once I have this tension on the hip here, I can actually kick my leg through. So if I didn't have this grip on his hip and I tried to kick my leg through, he could just follow my leg. But because I have this hand here connected to his hip now, and I have my other hand here connected to his leg any kind of motion I use with this foot to kick it out here, this is going to uh, free my leg. So let's see. let's see. So he goes over. He gets a toe hold, but it's just not the right angle. Um, you know, my knee's facing down. So let's see how I rotate. And now we have the back. So I just established a seatbelt position. <laughs> So now we have the seatbelt position, um, covering my choking hand. So this is always what I tell guys, always make sure you cover your choking hand when you get the seatbelt, you know, um, uh, you know, in this particular case, my, my left arm is over my right, my left hand is over my right hand. So this is a good start. I have my bottom hook here. So now we're just chilling, kind of seeing what's going to happen. He's like, Oh no. <laughs> so I reap across his face here because he was talking a lot. So, <laughs> so usually when somebody is, uh, you know, it, that, that, the, the, the neck is wide open, uh, or the face is wide open. I'm sorry. The face is wide open. Uh, and I always encourage guys to always do this now. This used to actually be somewhat, 
uh, frowned upon uh, long ago. Um, they kind of saw this as face cranking. Um, and it, I suppose it is, but it's uh, widely used now, uh, much like other techniques that were kind of taboo in the past. Even leg locks, you, people didn't use them at all. So because uh, it was considered a little taboo. But this is uh, actually, um, there's a big difference I always tell guys when I go across somebody's face like that. I'm not punching across his face. This is a big difference um, if, if, rather than me just kind of placing my arm there and pressuring to move his neck. The whole point of doing, or move his face, the whole point of this is to move his chin over here to get him to turn, and kind of look at me. If I can get him to turn and look at me, then that means typically um, the chin could possibly pop out here. And then I would have I'd, my arm would be under his neck. But I'm trying to get this left hand to his shoulder. I got control of the seat belt here. I got a good hook here, which is the most important hook right now is that bottom hook. But he's reaching for the hand, which is good. You just want to reach for the hand or the reach for the thumb, uh, the meat of the thumb. This will peel the hand off. You never want to grab, you know, in the middle of the forearm here. Still holding the seat belt. I'm staying really tight with my connection, kind of my... I always talk about this ear to ear connection. Don't have any space. I'm starting to turn, get control of this arm and put it behind his back. So I went to throw the leg over to trap it. Looks like I've scooped the leg or scooped the arm. I'm going to peel my arm back here, but, um, right here, I remember I had a, I have a hold of his wrist back here. Um, this is something I always, uh, uh tell people, and I do this a lot when I'm training. Um, whenever I get a seat belt and I get that underhook arm, I'll, I will always place it on, typically place it on the person's hand, right? I'm grabbing like the four fingers typically or the, or the knuckle line. And when I grab that, I have constant tension pressing back. Okay. I'm trying to push, I'm basically trying to put tension to, to potentially put his hand behind his back. And it's, it's surprisingly how often I get it because I think people are very, um, they're concentrating on this, obviously their face because in their face and their neck, uh, from getting strangled. So they can kind of in the mix and they're trying to free their feet down the free their uh, hips down here as well. So if I just create tension, I can potentially get it past this rib line right here. If I can get it past that rib line, then he's lost, you know, 50% of his strength. And then certainly once I get it behind his back, um, it's about 90% of the strength. He's not getting his hand back. So especially if I start throwing, start throwing this leg over. And Renee's actually really tough to submit from the back. He's got a big neck, big head, uh, and he's just good defense on on the good defense on the back. Even with the arm behind his back, I can't I can't strangle him. I thought I was going to finish him with the one arm, but I I didn't. He's still moving. But notice my right hand here is is cupping the shoulder now, so that's good. And here we go. Now you can see I have a grip of his hand, and I put it behind his back. And again, this is actually surprising how often this can actually happen. Um, I, I get this quite a bit. And notice my left knee, keep an eye on this left knee right here, because I'm going to try to wedge this left knee right under his uh, forearm here to, to trap his arm so that I can free this, this, my left arm. He's holding my foot, which I don't think, I would not say is a great idea, but so that wasn't actually a, a, strangu a strangulation. I don't think, I think that was more of a shoulder, shoulder lock. So, or maybe a combination of two, but I certainly know I, it, it'd be very difficult to finish Renee here just with a one arm, um, just because he's really strong uh, up in his chest and neck area. But um, usually big guys have will have very tight shoulders. I have I have tight shoulders as well because I'm have more of a bigger chest. Um, and if you can get that hand behind the back, it's just a matter of time before uh, they'll. The more you pull it up, the more they're gonna, um, the more painful it's gonna be. So pretty standard. So, <laughs> so we're going to start again. All right. This is shoulder. It's like my shoulder's all right. All right. So we're here. Okay, so now I'm um, playing some hand game. I want to make sure that just in case Renee tries to rush in with some pressure passing, I have this reverse X right here. I'm always setting up a reverse X when I'm in this kind of seated position trying to start into hand fight. I'll do this so that way... Just in case he starts to press really fat, uh, hard forward and, and quickly, I can go into a honey hole position and elevate him. So this is something pretty standard. Uh, most people don't fall for it anymore because it's not that, uh, it's not that uncommon now for people just to put the reverse X in when they're in a seated guard. And notice he's not, he's not driving forward. So I'm, okay. I'm going to bump him with my knee a little bit to see if I can get him to come forward. 
So, okay. So this is, it's always a good strategy. If somebody's not, if somebody's not uh, actively pressing forward to pressure into you, you should be going forward and, and, and either uh, bumping them with your knee or actually just standing up and starting to wrestle up. Um, I just typically, typically tend to be very lazy. So, um, I'll, I'll just kind of give them a little nudge to make them think I want to get up. And sometimes I do, but, um, it at least gets them to start to engage. So I'm going to start to try to hand fight. So I push on that knee to get it, try to get an angle so that you can post that leg up. I try to grab the hand, but now this leg is posted up. I may try to attack it here. Okay. So he did good. He threw my feet upside down or threw my feet over my head, which is good. Got me on my back. So I got butterfly. I just follow him around with the butterfly. Okay. So now I have head control, head control, wrist control, bit of a scissor type of, type of position. So you need to be careful here with uh, that bottom. My bottom left leg can really start to change right now when I, if, if I swing back to, the, to my right. He has a control of my hand here, which I don't mind too much uh, because it's really this bottom left leg that he needs to watch out for. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. He's trying to pop that, just kind of pop that arm off, like kind of like you would in wrestling. Um, it's not as effective when we're on the ground, especially when he's on his knees here. Um, he just doesn't have the, have the right angle. He can't like kind of duck his body down. He can't, he can't go very far. So, um, I kind of have a grip with my wrist, a wrist grip around the back of his neck. So it's going to be hard to pop that arm off that way. So I'm trying to catch the forearm going into a Russian tie type of thing or a two on one. He pushes in. I'm again harassing the hand, both hands. Okay, so I have this kind of lazy half guard type of position, but it's, it's still active. I'm, I'm starting to sit up. Switched. Okay. So that was just a kind of a, like, I want to sit up. And then I was actually, like I was going to sit back, but then I, I swung the leg around and went to a triangle. This is what I was saying earlier about monitoring that bottom leg because that bottom leg can start to swing around pretty quick. It's still going to be very difficult to triangle Renee here. Again, he's, he's, he's got a big chest. So, uh, and a big neck. So it's going to be difficult here. I got a soft lock here immediately what I always tell guys is don't grab your shin. I know this is like a, a thing. I, I mean, I, I shouldn't say don't, I would say that there are times when you should grab your shin, I think, but most of the time when I'm got to have a soft lock on a triangle here, like, like what I have here where my legs just aren't triangled yet, both my hands will always commit to the back of the head to pull him down. This is a, this is my standard thing that I do. Um, especially since the game has evolved and, uh, grabbing my shin is generally not not enough. Guys can still posture up, and my hips my hips are getting dragged up on top of the guy. And um, but it's not wrong, I would say by any means. Um, I just like to have this double hand on the head control once I get that soft. That's the second thing that I do. And now he just pops it out. There you go, boom. And then here, went back to a he went to a kind of the to go the pass. I have put my butterfly hooks in, and now attacking a leg. So now the leg going through, I swing the leg over. So I got a reap now. And now this is the bite and I already have the grip here. You can see I already have the, the grip on the heel and he went to turn. So he's going to carry me with him. The reason why this is working is because my foot here is crunching back. My heels are crunching back on, uh, on his, uh, his uh, thigh. Um, and so now everything is sucking in. So my heels are basically going to my butt. I'm Staying his tight and balled up and connected to his leg as I possibly can. But I've gone to a fully reap position here into a, into an outside Ashi. And then I'm going to try to finish belly down here. There. So we finished with belly down. So uh, that was a good little sequence of transition. He did a really good job just ripping up and posturing up out of that triangle. <laughs> All right. So we're going again. And again, just playing some butterfly. I'm going to kick on his legs. I like put it, placing my foot here when I'm uh, playing with guys. When I, when I start to roll with guys that really like to be on both knees here, um, I really like to start kicking on their kicking at their knees. A lot of big guys play this game to where they'll kind of have both knees on the ground. They kind of walk like knee walk to you. I'm always kicking at their knees and grabbing their hands and pulling them around. It's a good strategy because you can get easy angles from there and you can scramble uh, faster. Scramble up faster than they can. 
see, I kind of push it and I went to like, I went to, as a push it, I went to, 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 to a uh, arm drag and he just kind of ripped his arm out, which is, which is fine. I retracted my hands back to like an inside position. Now he's going for an arm drag, but then I switched the arm drag. So this is a good, this is always a good strategy. It's worth taking a look at that again, because um, this is kind of what I teach in class sometimes is whenever somebody, whenever somebody is trying to arm drag you, if you go limp just for a second, you can counter their arm drag with your own arm drag. Okay. And that's exactly what happened here. So watch how he kind of goes to his arm drag. If I would have kind of stiffened up here, and he could have probably pulled across, but since he went there and I, I just kind of went limp for a second with my arm, now I can counter drag, boom. And then there it is. And I pop myself to the side. Okay. So now I have bottom hook in my right hook right here is in, I start to get that connection, my chest to back. I got his hip here and then I'm starting to throw my right arm over its neck. Boom. Now I'm going to cover my hands. My choking hand is always what I'm trying to cover, but I have the bottom hook and that's all I care about. You'll notice that this uh, left foot right here is not, I'm not in a big rush to throw this over yet um, because when I'm in this, you, you can't see this, but if you can see my calf right here, it's pretty deep, uh, got a deep bite on his, uh, on his hip. Usually I prefer to go to a twister control type uh, back control here um, just because it's, a, it's extremely effective uh, when I have a, when you have, when your bottom leg is really deep into the, into the hip here. Um, instead of trying to fight to get this leg over, you can certainly throw the leg over, nothing wrong with that, but, and I might still, I don't know. Let me see. No, boom. See, so now I throw that, that, uh, that half, uh, it's a triangle, uh, around the thigh. So he can't his only way out right now in this position is going to be to get his body over here. You see, he's going to have to drag himself over here and put his, his back on the mat. If he can do that, then he can escape this position. So turning like this in that direction is not going to free him from this position. My legs are locked and I have a kickstand right here. I have a post. And so he can't technically go this way. As long as I hold onto this arm or, or I hold onto this leg here, um, he's not going to be able to uh, turn out of this. So he has a good bite on my hand here, my choking arm. Just staying patient with him. I'm monitoring the bottom bottom uh, half of the body, trying to keep uh, connected with my legs. The hand fighting is going to start. He had a hair in his mouth, pulled it out. There we go. So he's still controlling my choking arm. Now he's trying to wrist lock me, which is a good strategy. <laughs> Makes me pull away a little bit. So I'm trying to, okay, now I'm opting to go to a hook. He pushes it off. Okay, so I'm trying to free my right hand. I, actually, what I want now, I want to free this this right hand so that I can bring it over to the other side of his body and just go into a full twister control. So I go to climb on top because that was a clear, clear way to go because he's getting to turtle. So it looks like I'm going to get my arm on the other side. So I did scoop the arm through. Now I have a twister control setup. I have control of this side of his body and I have a hook on this side of his body. So if I can get him dragged back down to the floor, then I can potentially have uh, twister back control. So I'm going to really try to anchor on this arm, pull that elbow up, to try to get him extended up so he'd want to fall to his right. But he's really strong here. He's keeping that elbow in. I'm trying to chew on one of his elbow to drag it forward. This is the best course of action here. I could try to throw that. I could try to throw this left hook in. I'm sorry. Yes, my left hook in. I could throw that in, but this foot's so deep. I don't really don't need it. I may start to transition to a triangle to the back, which is what I'm trying to do. I'm going to run out of time, but um, that's what I'm trying to do. Now that I have a high mount, I'm going to start looking for arm bars and triangles. Time. Okay. So it was a good roll. Uh, that was a quick one. Just a uh, pretty, pretty standard stuff. Nothing too, nothing too crazy. Uh, Renee's a really good training partner. He's, um, and he's, he's very good. He's very controlled with his rolling, uh, very strong and technical with his defense. So this is always, always good. Um, it's, I always tell guys too, when you're, when you're going against somebody like Renee, it's, uh, it's not in your best interest just to try to finish him as fast as you can and try to use everything you got on his back. Because if you do, you're just going to blow your forearms out and you get tired. Uh, and this is not a good strategy. So I was trying to take my time a little bit to, so that I don't, you know, burn myself out and trying to, trying to strangle him. There are guys like that, that are just, 
you know, they're just very technically sound when you get on their back and, you know, maybe their build is a little bit different, maybe they're a little bit bigger, maybe a little stronger. And it's not in this, um, it's better for you to concentrate on control of the position. So, um, this is kind of what, uh, a bit of an example of that. Um, but yeah, this was a good breakdown, uh, with, uh, a good role with, uh, with Renee here. And, uh, I'll be posting more, uh, breakdowns, uh, another breakdown later this week with a, uh, I think a couple, couple purple belts. So that'll be interesting. Uh, okay. That's it. Thanks.